Good morning, my dear friends in Christ. Actually, according to Methodist tradition, often we may not have a sermon for the Covenant Sunday. But there is a small brief uh, reflection which I do like to share with you as we observe this, uh, the great tradition as Methodists. Dear friends, uh, the covenant, uh, the word uh, derives from the Hebrew word uh, which is called berit. berit. So the, when you go into the root meaning of that word, uh, it says kind of a, a bond, or according to Hebrew tradition, the lifestyle and the faith, uh, it is morally like to cut a covenant, to cut a covenant. Because always when they make covenant with their God in the patriarchal society, they offer an animal. They offer an animal and cut into two pieces and they make that covenant. And also we know when you go into the, uh, the Exodus, uh, they cut that covenant out of stone tablets and God has written that the Ten Commandments in that. So it is something like sometimes it's uh, superior and inferior parties can make covenants. But when it comes to the biblical theology of the covenant as Methodist, here the most uh, uh, unique aspect of the Methodist covenant that the living God is inviting us as his creatures, as his uh, fellow beings to make a covenant with this uh, marvelous God. If you go into the scripture, there are five covenants we can see in the Bible. It is the first one, the covenant with Noah. That is Genesis chapter 9 where we see that God made a covenant with Noah we call rainbow covenant. The sign, outward symbol was given as the rainbow which God has saved the whole humanity, there won't be any great flood and you are not going to be destroyed by nature. And the second one, the covenant with Abraham. Genesis chapter 17, 12 to 1 to 9, 15, 1 to 7, 21, 17, 1 to 27. If you go in this biblical scripture, that you will see that God has made his covenant with Abraham the outward symbol was the circumcision, covenant of circumcision. The covenant of rainbow, covenant of circumcision. The third covenant, covenant with Moses. Where you get it, uh, Genesis, uh, Exodus chapter 24, verses 1 to 11. Where that uh, Moses cut uh, animal and took blood and sprinkled over people and it says that uh, I will be your God and you will be my people. I will be your God and you will be my people. That is the essence of the entire exercise of this covenant. I, we are his people and he is our God. That the covenant through the blood of that, uh, sprinkling of blood over that. And then the fourth covenant where we find in Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 to 37, where Jeremiah is telling that, uh, I'm going to write my covenant, not the stone tablets, but in your hearts. I'm going to write my covenants in your hearts. That will be a different covenant, weeping prophecies emphasizing that. Then finally, the fifth covenant, the new covenant, what God has came into this world, and sending only begotten son to make that covenant with entire humanity as the Messiah, as our savior, who redeem us from all the sins what we carry on in our lives. So where you find it, Mark chapter, St. Mark chapter 14, verse 24, St. Matthew 26, verse 27, and 1 Corinthians 11, 25. Those are the five main covenants according to our belief and faith. That is the biblical foundation or theological aspect of the covenant. But when it comes to the church tradition, throughout the early church, there were many people have 
not added, not added, acknowledge there is a covenant. Cyprian, Augustine, and early church fathers have not added, but not put into, materialize in their faith. In the medieval church also, people have spoke about covenant. But as Methodist, the Methodist church introduced this covenant service into the entire Christian world through John Wesley. And John Wesley felt that uh, this is something people should do. There is no time, there is no place to make that covenant with your living God. We are being here, gather here, to make that precious covenant with that living God in this morning. I know that you have received this green color sheet. Please kindly go through. I wanted to emphasize over and over again. And kindly go through that and read it carefully. Read it carefully. John Wesley started this covenant tradition from 1755. And he started this covenant service from London, then Newcastle, Bristol, and various other places where especially the strong Methodist presence were there in this uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, urban cities, uh, places. And he started this service. But it appeared in words uh, in 1788 and uh, started uh, the proper order of service uh, as the covenant uh, service. So my dear friends, it is uh, most often we may not take very seriously. I do know that when I was in some other country, and the, some of people used to tell, Leslie, I'm really scared to read these words. I'm really scared to go through this prayer because I'm making that covenant with my God, which I can't forget, which I can't mislead in my life. And I have to abide it by these words. So that is the Methodist tradition. And he expect it is not a, a merely reading words, or it is not something that we are expecting privileges from God. It is something that you sacrifice yourselves to this living God. I think this is a terrible kind of a, a prayer that you ever read in your life. Why? You say that, Lord, use me. That is a dangerous word that we can say in our faith. Lord, use me. Lord can use you in nice uh, uh, kind of uh, places, in, like flower vases in the, uh, in the society, in upper places. But not. God is asking you, suffer for me. Carry your cross. Follow me and come and die for me. So, my dear friends, that is God is telling. It is a coin. Come and die for me. The Christian is not a, a kind of a, uh, a kind of a cultic uh, thing that we perform over there. Or the Christian is not screaming out, uh, according to my knowledge. Christian is a lifestyle, a movement which spread throughout the Western world and change. A thousand, thousands people's lives, millions of people being converted. It has happened in, through John Wesley's life. It has happened through Billy Graham's life. It can happen today in your church if you really single person commit to that God. More than we are waiting for God, God is waiting to do tremendous things in your life through your life. So let us have that, have that uh, passion, have that commitment in our lives because this God came to this world because you and me, a sinful, sinful like me, that God loves us. So let us commit that sense of commitment in this moment and we will commit our entire life to this living God.